Welcome back into the studio. This is my reference photo from wildlifereferencephotos.com and it's of a, a Jaguar Cub that I've recently done over on my Patreon channel. So this is the reference photo. This is a look at the finished drawing. So you can see I changed that quite a bit and on this video I'm going to show you how I did the eyes and also a little bit of the fur technique as well. So I've zoomed right in so you can get a nice close-up of the head. I've got my reference photo to the left and I'll, I'll put up an image of the head as we begin working on it. If you've seen any of my other videos, you know that I'm using pastel matte paper. This is the dark grey paper. The light grey paper is almost white so I like to use these mid-tone surfaces more often than not. I've transferred my drawing onto the um, the pass mark paper just using standard transfer paper okay nothing complicated there I haven't sealed anything at all I've just put a little bit of white in where the highlight of the eyes are going to go and a little bit on that lip as well it just instantly starts to make it look a bit more three-dimensional I'm going to use a combination of pencils soft pastels uh, pan pastels as I'm using now just to show different techniques you know I like to show lots of different things in my videos but you could do the whole background using soft pastel sticks you could even do it with pencils as well but obviously pencils are going to weigh down really fast now the reason people ask me do I start with the background do I start with the subject it depends it's not very often that I pull, put a full background in especially if I've got a subject that's very dark and you're not going to get much darker than this black Jaguar cub if I put a light background in now at this early stage then it's a massive chance of me really muddying it up and getting smudging from the black cat onto the background all the time and I'd have to be super careful with it so I don't really want to do that so you may ask why am I putting in the background at all but I'm just putting in a small amount because the lighting effect is very very important in this drawing and I need to be able to judge how dark the Jaguar is going to need to be and how light the background will be so I'm just putting in a small amount just on the top section and on this bottom section that kind of frames the head nicely but it's not putting in a lot of background which I'm going I could possibly muddy up so it's just there to help me now with the tonal values and the colors nothing more than that and I'm just mixing those pan pastel colors on a piece of normal printer paper now this is really an advanced lesson okay I'm showing you the techniques I'm not really showing you things so that you can copy along I hope you take these techniques and apply it to your own subject or even if you wanted to do a black Jaguar cub, perhaps pick a different image to make it more of your own and just apply these techniques because there's lots of images around. This particular one is from wildlifereferencephotos.com. So if you wanted to do that particular one, you can purchase it for a really small amount there. But as I said, it's nicer to you know take the techniques and um, work with them. But this is an advanced drawing. Okay, so I've got lots of easy, uh, down to complete beginner ones on my Patreon art channel and on my website, jasonmorgan.co.uk. And that really shows you then how I mix pan pastels and um, all those beginner type of questions are answered in those videos. But this one, as you can see with the subject and the background, it, it's really an advanced drawing. So... I wanted to zoom in because I only got so much room on the screen to actually show you various things and if I zoom out too far you don't see the details so if you're looking for very basic um, instruction check out one of those other videos I'm starting with the eyes because they've I like to get something really light in early on in my drawings I say this often in my videos and I also like to get something really dark in quite early on that shows me and sets up my tonal range straight away so by again the very light in I've got that part of the um, spectrum in there 
and by getting something very dark in I've got that in as well it's easier to judge everything else then by that now the eyes are very easy to do on this drawing it's just basically a very light coat of um, what's, what's really almost white but it's got a touch of green in there as well you guys know I don't go giving out pencil numbers on anything other than my complete beginner couple of videos I don't teach that way I don't like teaching that way and I've I've covered the reasons behind that and the um, students on patreon and their improvements show you don't need the crutch of the um, pencil numbers being called out and the number of pencils I'll be using on this was basically a black or brown cat I've got pretty much all of my sets out looking for those colors now the you can see I'm putting in the very dark we've got the lights for the eyes so there's a tonal range pretty much set up already now I could use pan pastels for the early stages and I showed that also in a lot of my other videos for the blocking in I could also use pastel sticks for the blocking in the underdrawing or the underpainting as you might call it in this version in this video I think I'll use pencils mostly I recently did a portrait a Tony Stark portrait and I use you know pencils for a lot of that and I'm going to use a similar technique for this just to show that you can just buy the pencils and do it that way and what I'm going to do I'll be doing the blocking in with the pencils and you'll see me actually smudging it in using a paper stump similar to this one so these push the pastel into the pastel tooth into the surface okay so when people use pastel mat or a sanded paper even but I'm, I'm specifically going to talk more about just pastel mat they can sometimes say that the paper still has a grainy appearance even when they get to the final layers the reason is they didn't actually use something like a stump or their finger or, or something to push the pastel down into the paper surface if you don't use something to push the pastel down in then the pastel never actually gets down into the little recesses if you think of it as as uh, peaked mountains the pastel is kind of sitting on top of the peaks and the grain you see in is the paper color down in the valleys of in between the mountains you need to get the pastel down into those valleys on the early stages when you're doing your drawing okay on the first layers the way to do that is to push it in with your fingers rub it in gently with your fingers or to use a paper stump and that does it even more fully when those little recesses those valleys have got the, the pigment down in there the pastel down in there the graininess is gone and by the time you add layers on top you can get a lovely soft velvety finish to it as you'll see in this drawing now I'm just building up a bit more refinement in the eyes but it's very very subtle the eyes are a major part of this drawing but it's not because they've got dramatic colors or textures in there it's just because it's really light against the darker fur surrounding it and it's also nice how, how the eyes are looking up with the scene the light is streaming down in the opposite direction so that's a nice play with the light and the eyes as well so you can see I'm just using really little rounded strokes sometimes but it's not complicated they're not complicated eyes at all and that's about all I'll do for the eyes I may come back to them later on refine them a bit more but what you'll see me do now as I'm starting that initial underlayer of the uh, fur using my pencils on this side a lot so I'm looking at the reference I'm picking up little hints of colors it's a black subject in general but there's lots of actual co different colors in there and you'll see me layer those on top then you'll see me smudge them into the surface creating a much softer less grainy look that I was talking about and then building the realism and the darkness on top
Just wanted to quickly mention my Patreon channel for those looking for even more in-depth art instruction. It's packed full of pastel videos, oil videos as well, and those videos are being added to new ones every single month. I have videos for the complete beginner that have never done pastels or oils before with just limited supplies. And I take you from the very first blocking in all the way through to the final detailed drawings and paintings. I've also got some really unusual subjects as well and in all of my videos I always take you through all the details. You see everything I do, how I create my work. But it's not just for beginners, it's also for novices and I also show the best artwork that I've ever done as well. And this particular elephant video spans six hours so you know you're going to see tons and tons of details, tips and techniques. And as mentioned, I've got lots of oil videos on there too, so there really is something for everybody. And you get access to hundreds of hours worth of videos for just $4. Now over a thousand members strong, hope to see you there soon. Now I'm starting to deposit a bit more pastel down and pushing a little bit harder. And you can clearly see that grainy appearance starting to come about now that I was I mentioned earlier on this is real time okay so I'm, I'm not taking a lot of time as I'm doing this and I'm generally looking at the reference and saying to myself okay what am I seeing here that's kind of a dark brown I know I need to go darker with the black as well I'm trying to see some other colors in there there's like purples up here in these lighter areas it's certainly not a white and it's not really a dead neutral gray is it like purples and blues in there so I'll start to layer those as well bottom right you can see I've got some glassine paper that's just a neutral pH paper and when you get your pastel mat it'll be interleaved with that so you can cut that up and not waste it but actually use it to either go in between the sheets on your finished drawings or to rest your hand on like I'm doing here so you can see, I can see kind of a, a purpley color down here, but notice that graininess. Lots of beginners, that's where they start getting concerned, thinking that this is not going to be smooth, it's not turning out exactly how they want it, and getting disappointed with pastel matte paper. But as you've seen, you saw my finished drawing, at the end I haven't got any of that graininess there. That's what I'll be showing in this video, especially these you know first layers how I get rid of that now here it's much darker we can see that on the reference we've got those markings going up and coming down towards the eye so I'm not filling the grain by pushing the pencil really hard if I did that I would fill the two for the paper as well and I'd be starting to struggle to get layers on top so we're going to fill the grain or, or push it sorry down into the the two for the paper with the stumps instead. That'll leave plenty of texture to the paper that I can build my layers on top of. So you can see I'm trying to keep the shape of these markings in the areas above the eyes. So I've mentioned it a few times, now let's see how I blend these in. So this is a, a soft paper stump. The stumps are either kind of hard, like that yellowish coloured one, the sandy coloured one you saw earlier on. They're a hard paper stump. This one I'm using is a soft rice paper stump. This happens to be a Derwent one. And it's great if you want to really, really blend an area out. And if I was using my finger, it wouldn't blend this much, okay? So I'm hardly using any pressure, but it's merging the colours together and pushing them down into the surface of the paper. Now you can clean them on some microfiber cloth or a bit of sandpaper if you wanted them clean. But I generally keep, you know, one one that's a bit dirtied and dark, and then I'll keep the other end perhaps for lighter areas. You see, and you're just blending it. Now don't go don't expect this to all of a sudden start looking like a finished drawing. That comes with the layers. 
this is just getting rid of the greeniness. So it really is as simple as that. Okay, that's how I'm going to treat and attack the whole drawing, or at least the head with the pencils, and then smudging the colors together, merging them together, together with the pastel stumps. So now I've done that, let's start adding some more pastel with the pencils. Once again, using the pencils on their side. Okay, so let's look at that again. More pastel has been laid down. And then back with the pastel stamp on its side, going in generally the fur direction as well, because not all of these marks actually smudge together. Little bits are left, so that's why I'm still making sure to go in that fur direction. You see, and as simple as that, we're starting to really get that soft appearance. Now, obviously, I need, I know I need to go much lighter in areas, much darker in areas. I'm just using my finger there to put the finishing kind of blend on there. Because the finger doesn't blend as much as the stump. So when I don't want it to really blend a lot, that's when I use my fingers. So that's how I'm going to continue now building up very very basic underlayer for the Jaguar Cubs head. 